Welcome on behalf of the Bloomington Bach Cantata Project. I'm Dan Malamed, director. We present cantatas in performances modeled on Bach's own. We're a project of the Bloomington community, of Bloomington Early Music, and of the historical performance and musicology departments of the IU Jacobs School of Music. Our work is made possible by generous financial support from the Bloomington Arts Council and Bloomington Urban Enterprise Association and from our individual donors. Our performances are available on our YouTube channel. Please consider liking and sharing this video and following us on Facebook. Help us get the word out. If you're able and would like to support our work, information on donating is in the notes below this video, on our Facebook page, and in the program also linked below, where you will also find the text and translation of today's work and a list of the performers. Our routine is to hear a performance of the cantata, a short talk about the work, and then a second performance, in which we hope you hear new and different things. Thank you. 
der Welt, das Licht der Welt bestrahlt den Kreis der Erde. Der große Gottes Sohn verlässt des Himmels Thron und seine Majestät gefällt, ein kleines Menschenkind zu werden. Wer nur gedenken kann, der König wird ein Untertan. Der Herr erscheint als ein Knecht und wird dem männlichen Geschlecht. O süßes Brot in aller Ohren, zum Trost und Heil geboren.
Christmas has arrived a little early here at the Bloomington Bach Cantata Project. Our piece is Dazu ist der Schienen der Sohn Gottes, BWV 40. Bach composed it for the second of the three days over which Christmas was celebrated in his Lutheran world, just like Easter and Pentecost, the other two principal feasts of the liturgical year. The first and second days of the three were more festive. Congregations heard concerted music by Bach's ensemble, the primary ensemble of Leipzig in both churches, that is both at St. Thomas and St. Nicholas, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. The second ensemble played at the other church, directed by Bach's principal assistant, they were heard afternoon and morning. And the two ensembles switched places at lunchtime, probably meeting up in Leipzig's main square, carrying instruments and music as they crossed paths. Cantata 40 is from Bach's first Christmas in Leipzig, the year 1723. For the first day of the feast, he reused a cantata from his Weimar years, Christen Etzet diesen Tag, BWV 63. Our piece for the second day was newly composed that year. The two pieces used two different musical emblems of festivity. 
BWV 63 for the first day is a trumpets and drums piece. Our work calls for two horns, an alternative mode of celebration. It offers a different musical color and typically brings with it a different musical key. This cantata has eight movements, but it's a compact piece. Three of the movements are stanzas of hymns set as simple four-part chorales. There are two arias, but both are relatively short. There's an opening chorus that sets a scriptural dictum, two recitatives. This is definitely a so-called winter cantata, about 10 minutes shorter than a typical summer cantata, given the temperatures that were likely to prevail in unheated churches at the time. It's striking that this cantata's text does not draw directly on the gospel reading for the day. That, that reading for the second day of Christmas is the second portion of Luke's narration of the nativity, beginning with the shepherds, and adds Matthew's telling of Jesus' warnings to the Pharisees. The text of this cantata is not particularly interested in narrative. Rather, it concerns itself with the meaning of Jesus' birth for the believer. It opens with an epistle verse on this topic, but that is not the epistle for the day. It's rather from the first epistle of John, which was not assigned for the second day of Christmas. Its opening words directly address the meaning of Christmas for the believer. Dazu ist erschienen der Sohn Gottes. Jesus appeared to destroy the works of the devil. This governs the whole textual and musical trajectory of the cantata. The first recitative, that's movement two, presents the advent of Jesus, and it's in Johannine terms, that is, according to St. John. Um, it begins, in fact, with a paraphrase of John, das Wort war Fleisch, the word became flesh. And that's from the reading, in fact, from the next day, the third day of Christmas. The epistle of John, from which our first dictum comes, and the gospel of John were held by Luther to be by the same author. The theology of this recitative also clearly draws on John's outlook, that is, uh, focusing on Jesus' paradoxical glorification in the abasement of his crucifixion. The king becomes a subject, tells the recitative, the Lord appears as a servant. And the recitative is also very Lutheran. Jesus is said to be born for comfort, the German word is trost, and salvation. That's echoed in the next chorale stanza, whose verse was clearly chosen for this line, for he has come into the world for comfort, for trost. Comfort was a very important concept for Martin Luther in particular. The second line of the chorale stanza makes it the affective stance of all this clear, Christ brings joy. So the first three movements of the cantata form a unit, reflecting the first half of the dictum, the Son of God appeared. It reflects on the comfort brought by Jesus' appearance, the nature of that appearance, and on joy as the appropriate emotional response. But the cantata te text makes a turn here. The aria movement four opens hellish serpent. Are you not afraid? The recitative movement five says the serpent who dropped the poison of the soul on all the children of Adam. And the chorale movement six begins shake your head and say, flee, you ancient serpent. These mention each the appearance of the serpent in the Garden of Eden, whose head, it is prophesied, will be trampled. This is a traditional Christian reading, that is to say that the serpent of the book of Genesis and of the Garden of Eden is Satan. And in a particularly Lutheran reading, the promised trampling of the serpent is by Jesus. And Luther, in fact, calls this passage the first scriptural prophecy of Jesus, in which it says that um, the seed of the woman will trample or snap off the head of the serpent. Luther says that is a direct prophecy of Jesus. Now, this view of Jesus as a warrior who will defeat, defeat Satan and death is known as a philosophy and a theology of Christus Victor, Christ the victorious one. And this is a central theme also of John's gospel. That's the theology behind the aria number four. Jesus, it says, is born to crush the head of a serpent or snap it off, and that serpent is Satan. In the recitative that follows, with the birth of Jesus, the serpent no longer brings danger, and then that message is confirmed in the chorale movement six. So this middle portion of the text reflects the second half of the opening dictum, Dass er die Werke des Teufels zerstöre, that he might destroy or scatter the work of the devil. 
The Aria Movement 7 then celebrates this. Christians rejoice, it begins. And the final chorale asks for peaceful and blessed year to come, understood as a confirmation of the message of the cantata. Now, Bach's musical response to the trajectory of the libretto is partly, maybe even mostly, straightforward. That last aria, Movement 7, has a text, at least a first line anyway, of rejoicing. Bach sets it as a virtuosic tenor aria with extensive vocal elaboration of Freut euch, the command to rejoice. It's got a striking festive instrumentation, no string instruments, just an ensemble of two horns and two oboes, most unusual and an extraordinary sound. It, this represents, to a large extent, a return to the festive instrumentation of the opening movement. Horns there might also connect to the regal imagery of that movement, which refers to heaven's throne and majesty. And this is one of the ways that horns could be used, like trumpets, um, in association with royalty. The serpent portion of the cantata is equally strongly musically profiled. The bass aria, Hüllische Schlange, Will dich nicht bange, is in the minor mode, it presents continuous fast notes in violin one, disjunct angular melodic line in the instrumental ritornello, especially the oboes, and in the voice. Almost every musical arrival is on a dissonance, on a chord that needs to be resolved. This is an operatic rage aria. Hölische Schlange will dich nicht bange. Oh, you, you hellish serpent, are you not afraid? The syntax of the ritornello and the vocal line are not, though, the more typical Vivaldi and spinning out kind of ritornello, but they are regular and periodic, making this movement some kind of ecstatically demonic dance in the face of the hellish serpent. This aria is musically contrasted with the setting of the next movement, a so-called instrumentally accompanied recitative for alto and string instruments. The writing is very low in the instrument's range, ranges, the new notes are grouped in pairs, it calls for a slow, steady vocal declamation. It contrasts in every way and is probably meant to evoke the peace and the calm of the Garden of Eden. And if you know Bach St. Matthew Passion, you might compare this movement to the accompanied recitative on Abend das Kühlevar, which refers to some of the same images here. And you might also note in the text of our recitative the reappearance of comfort at the end of the recitative, sei getrost betrübter Sünder, be comforted, you troubled sinner. This theologically clarifies the mechanism and the nature of the comfort that Jesus brings in the course of this cantata. And it, in doing that, it links the first and second themes of the cantata, Jesus' advent and the serpent whose head will be snapped. So how does Bach treat the opening topic of the piece? In some ways, that's straightforward. The, there, we hear clearly the celebratory tone of the opening movement with its festive instrumentation reflected in the ritornello and its horn-dominated texture. And we also get a long vocal episode that treats the text in imitation, mostly with doubling instruments, a setting that recalls a so-called motet, a work that does not usually draw on independent instruments. And a motet setting was typically used, even in a cantata like this, for affect neutral, for emotionally neutral, doctrinal, scriptural sayings, um, like this one on its surface, which on its surface says, this is the purpose of Jesus' appearance. That's a theological explanation, and in some ways it is an abstract one. But there's another element in Bach's first movement as well. The first part of the text lines up with the opening music. Dazu ist erschienen der Sohn Gottes. For this purpose, the Son of God appears. And we hear it as a dialogue between instrumental sections that then leads to a dialogue when it's presented vocally as well between unified voices on the one hand and instruments on the other. And then, both in the ritornello and in the voices, there's a passage that's more active, it's more continuous, and it drives toward our arrival and toward our cadence. When the voices enter, though, that section, that active, continuous section that drives to a cadence, takes on a new role. That's the music that carries the text, das er die Werke des Teufels zerstöre, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And we hear it in rapid declamation from the voices that, in fact, invokes conventional 18th century musical depiction of rage and of war. And a lot of this is recited by the ensemble, sometimes with no harmony, on one pitch, um, 
they take up a feature of the horn writing in which there's a repeated note that sounds like it's filler in the middle of the texture, but turns out to carry this important text and with it some of the activity and rage, in fact, of this part of the text. Then there's an imitative section of the piece on Dazu ist der Schienen der Sohn Gottes, the more neutral part, for this purpose the Son of God has appeared. But that too gradually becomes overtaken and overwhelmed by vocal and instrumental entrances of Das er die Werke des Teufels zerstöre. And it even ends this vocal statement as well. The final chorus, and this is fairly typical, is a joint statement of our opening material by the voices and instruments together. That is, of the opening Ritornello material, sung and played by all the voices and all the instruments. By this time, we know what's coming, the agitated and chaotic material that begins with the material we associate with Dazu ist der Schienen der Sohn Gottes, for this purpose the Son of God appeared, but we are overtaken and overwhelmed by the music we have come to associate with that he might destroy the work of the devil. The repeated intrusion of this musical material effectively foretells the trajectory of the whole cantata and preaches, in effect, on the topic of Christus Victor, Jesus the Victor. And if you listen to this piece with 18th century ears, there is no missing Bach's meaning. Das 
Yeah. 